Now that we have a form that allows users to type in the names of their own events, um, we can add a handler for that form that will keep track of the, the events submitted by the user and will render them in the list. Let's go to our event controller and just uh, recall that from our demo and from our initial video we talked about uh, how the application currently just displays a list of the same four events. So these are just hard-coded. Um, the display all events controller method just has a list that we add four values to. It passes that list into the template or into the view which is at events slash index and let's look at that template and that event template just loops over that list of events and displays each one within an li tag. So currently the way this works is the controller just creates a, the same list of events each time and we see the same list rendered in the template. We want to rework our code so that when someone submits the form that we've created below um, that they will be able to see that new event that they submitted added to a list. Okay, so we already have um, uh, some, some logic here to display the events. We're going to need to rework this in a minute. Let's go ahead and create a new handler, though. Recall that we need to be able to handle requests um, for, our, uh, for our form. So let's make this a public string. And let's say um, add or create event. So this method will create a new event. Um, and let's see, it's going to need to take uh, accept post requests, so a lot of post mapping annotation to it. And this this uh, this handler needs to take some data, right? It's going to be reacting to a form submission or handling a form submission. So data will be passed in. We learned previously that we can pull data out of an incoming request using the uh, request param annotation in uh, inside of the method parameters list. So request param. And let's see, this will be a string, and I forgot what I named my parameter for my form, so let me go and look at my form right there. So it's called event name, and so as long as I use the exact same label here to name my variable, Spring Boot will be clever enough to know how those two match up, and it'll hand me the value of that parameter. Okay, so in the body of this method now, my method will be given... Um, a string called event name. I need to do something with that, all right? I need to put it into a list of events. Now, the list of events that we're currently using lives up here inside of our display all events handler, which is um, not accessible to the create event handler because this is a local variable inside this method. So we call the local variables only accessible within the method in which they're defined. So we need to make a list that is accessible to multiple methods within this list. In other words, we need to make a list at the class level. And the best way to do this in this case is to um, actually make it static. So let me go to the top of my class, make myself some room, and let me create a private static um, list of strings. It's going to just hold on to the event names. And let me call it events equals and new array list. Okay. Um, Recall that when you make a new array list, the, uh, as long as your declaration includes the data type of the, the, uh, the, 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 the elements that will be stored in the list, you don't need to put that data type in the constructor call. That'll be implicitly inferred. And uh, what else? Oh, so I, I typed my, um, my, my uh, field here as to be a type list. That's really all I need. I don't need to know that this is an array list. I'm just going to use the interface type. Generally, if you can code to an interface type, that's recommended, even though the, the actual thing inside of that field will be an array list. We just need to know that it's a list. Okay, so now, um, let's see. Now I have this list of events. I need to be able to add something to it. So let me say, um, down in my create event method, events.add, and let me add my event name. Okay, so now my events list will get a new event every time this form is processed. And uh, what do I want to do now? Well, I really just want to be able to display the list of events, um, but I already have a method that does that, so I don't want to rework that code. Um, in fact, the, the method up above that we had to start off with, this display all events, displays a list of events. Now, now currently, we'll re refactor this in a second. Currently, it's just displaying the static list. Um, but this is essentially a view that displays the list of our events. So I want this 
uh, post request to basically do the same thing. After someone creates a new event, they submit that form. I just want to show them the updated list. So there's a, there's a quick and easy and clever way to do this within Spring Boot. And we can return, uh, let me type this out and then I'll explain it. Return redirect colon um, in, in, uh, as a string. Okay, so what this says uh, is um, return a, a redirect response, which is a 300 level HTTP response that instructs the browser to go to a different page. So when someone submits this form, we will redirect them to uh, this just specifies redirect colon. After that, you would put um, the name of the, uh, the, or the path rather that you wanted to redirect them to. Um, in this case, we want to redirect them basically to the events path, which is the root path for this controller. So we can just leave that off. So uh, essentially redirect colon just says redirect them to the root path for the specific controller. And that will go to this handler and they'll see a list of events. Okay. Now, currently they're going to see the wrong list of events, so let's go ahead and rework this code. Uh, rather than having a static list or a sort of a, um, I don't mean static in, in the sense of the keyword static, uh, rather than having a list that never changes in this handler, let's use our new static field to uh, display the events there. So uh, let me get rid of that code. And I just need to I already have a model object. Remember, a model object is how we pass data into a view. And so I'm going to say model dot add attribute. And I'm going to call this events. And I'm going to give it the static list that belongs to my class. Recall that a static field uh, is just one that belongs to the class rather than to instances of the class. In other words, it's going to be shared uh, by, by every sort of uh, instance of our event controller object. Okay. So uh, that should work. The one last thing I have to do, which I almost always forget, is to add new routing information. So my post mapping down at the bottom should live at create. In other words, um, it lives at the same path as the get method above it, lives at slash events slash create. And again, this is okay to have the same path for these two methods because they handle different types of requests. If they both handled the same type of request, we could not put them at the same path. Let's start our application up and see if it works. Notice I didn't change the main um, index template within events, the one that just displays the list, because really the, the template doesn't care what the, the data behind it looks like. It just expects to be given a list of events, and then, it'll, and then it, will, um, it will render them, loop over them. And I'm doing that already in my, uh, in my controller, even though I'm doing that in a different way. So I don't need to refactor any template code here. So go to a browser, localhost 8080, slash events, and uh, slash create. So that's my form. Let's create an event. Been testing it out there, so it's auto-suggesting for me. Now when I hit create, hopefully, there we go. So uh, previously, in the last video, we saw an error when we tried to submit the form. Now we saw that our form was submitted to, well, we didn't see it. Uh, we got a redirect. We, we did see that the redirect worked. Recall that the redirect is supposed to re redirect us to the root of this particular controller, which is at slash events. That's where we are, slash events. and this is the refactored display all events method, which takes our static list, passes it into the view, and the view, as before, just renders that um, in, a, in a list. So let's try it again. So I'm going to add a second event, and I submit it, and my list is indeed updated. And we'll try just one more time, just because it's fun. Hmm, let's see, WWDC, that's the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference. And there we go. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So uh, now we have a, a form that will process events. One more thing I want to do, though, is let me show you what happens. Let me restart the application. So this static list just lives in memory. In other words, what I mean by that is it only exists during the lifetime of the application. Once the application stops, anything that's in this list goes away. The list gets destroyed. So that means that uh, essentially we can't keep track of these events over time that if somebody restarts or we restart our application, we're going to lose every event that was that was submitted before, which is okay. We're going to get past that. We'll eventually learn how to put this data into a database, which will allow it to uh, essentially live indefinitely and be accessible to our application over time. But right now, it's good enough to just work with the static list. The one thing I do want to do, though, is make this a little bit more user-friendly. Let me refresh my slash events view. Notice that if I don't have any events, in other words, I haven't created an event now, because I restarted my application and that the old uh, event list was wiped away. There's nothing here. This isn't very user friendly. It, you know, I, I have a page that says all events and there's nothing below it. So let me go ahead and rework my template. 
to just have a brief little message there uh, if uh, in the situation in which there are no events to show the user that hey nothing went wrong here there just aren't any events here so let me create a paragraph tag and um, I'm going to put within this tag a new piece of time leaf syntax so this is new let me call it th uh, unless and so unless is basically like the opposite of an if. So you, um, you uh, I'll walk through the syntax uh, in just a moment, but let me type it out first. I have trouble typing and talking at the same time. Okay, so what does this do? This is a paragraph tag, and it has um, a, a, an attribute th unless. So this is a time leaf attribute. It says, unless this Boolean statement evaluates to true, uh, display this element. So in other words, if this Boolean statement evaluates to true, it will not display this. Uh, if the Boolean statement evaluates to false, it will display it. And so what does the Boolean statement say? Um, this is sort of a, what you might call truthy logic. It's not; these aren't actual booleans inside of this, this statement, but it, you can sort of see how the, wor how the logic works. The first piece just says, "Is there something called events? Do I have a non-null variable called events? If so, let me make sure that there are things inside of that variable. So, in either the situation of we did not get an events list, or there's an events list but there's nothing inside of it, if either of those situations are true. Uh, then we're going to render this little no events message. Okay, so if you wanted the reverse logic, you would just use th colon if. So let's start this up, and then um, hopefully this view here will have a nice friendly message the first time, and then that message will go away after we add events. Okay, so I just started my application, my events list is empty, and when I render this view, I see there are no events. Let me go to slash create. Add an event. Now my events view at slash events uh, has one event, so we saw that that message, which was conditionally applied last time, is now gone because the events list is not empty. It has one item in it. Okay, so that's just how you can add some conditional logic. All right, great. In uh, the next video, we're going to look at how we can uh, reuse code across our templates and make our, our organization of our views a little bit more efficient.